Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Fly Dressing Made Easy. My name is Trevor Jones and this afternoon we're going to tie you a fly called the Sellafield Blue. A fly from my competition days. So it's quite possible many of you will not know the pattern. So without further ado, we've got a size 12 partridge supreme wet fly in the vise and onto that we're going to attach the thread which is a yellow nano silk okay trim the waist and we're going to take the thread down to a position which is midway between the point and the barb of the hook we don't want to take it too far down because you end up with the tail sloping slightly downwards which is not what we're looking for. Now the tail is approximately half a dozen eight half a dozen fibres from a dyed green grizzle hen cape. And we're going to position those on top so we've got the green tips but we've also got the black shading as well now we're going to bed that down working the thread back to the eye incorporating the waist into the fly now this fly has a reinforcing rib which is soft silver wire which we're going to attach as so you will see what I'm actually doing there we go now we take that again the thread down the hook to the position we tied the tail okay now the body is pheasant tail, standard pheasant tail is fine, but I have here a dyed green pheasant tail and I'm using two fibres and again I'm going to incorporate most of the tips of the pheasant tail actually into the fly. If they don't lie quite right no problem they're quite fine so you can actually snip them off without leaving a lump in the dressing okay now we're going to pick up the pheasant tail fibers and we're going to wind them in slightly open turns because what I want what I want is a little bit of the underbody showing through not a lot just a hint of that yellow thread underneath as you can see it does leave quite a nice effect okie doke now tie that off I'm conscious of keeping my hands out of the way so you can actually see what I'm doing here. Snip the waist off. Now the silver wire is going to come over the top in open turns to protect the pheasant tail. And you don't want too much of this. Four is ample. Again Make sure the materials you've tied in are secure. And as I've said in previous videos, don't use your scissors to do to cut the wire. You'll only end up with blunt scissors. Okay, that's fine. Now what we want now is a small pinch of a nice material. It's golden olive glister which we're going to actually dub onto the thread 
Now we want this to be quite straggly. We want it to sort of fan out at slightly different angles so the light actually catches it. So we've dubbed it on. Now we're going to take, we don't want too much of this, but we're just going to take a couple of nice turns. That's about right. And as you can see, if you've got a little bit too much on the thread dubbed, just pinch it off. Okie doke. Now, the hackle is going to be the same as we use the t for the tail. It's the dyed fluorescent green hen grizzle. We're going to tie this in by the tip. So to prepare that, I'm pulling the fibres down. Just so we get a nice soft sloping back hackle. Trim it off. OK, I'm just going to give the thread a little bit of a spin. That's fine. Tighten it up. Now this thread is amazingly strong. You can put an unbelievable amount of pressure on it. Now, we don't want too many turns of this, although because of the length of the hackle you won't get a lot of turns. But we want to stroke it back, take it around, stroking it as we go. And we're going to get possibly three turns here, which is just about right. Okay, let's tie it off. That looks good. Now, let's just neaten things up a little bit. We've got a few of the strands just overhanging the eye, which is something I'm particularly keen on not having because it just spoils a good fly visually anyway. Okay now I'm going to actually whip finish this because we have got a an addition to the dressing as the last step. So I'll tie off there, snip that off. Now we've got some glow bright floss, glow bright 11 I've got it in the in the bobbin holder, so we're actually going to attach that as we would the thread. And you may have guessed already the coloration of the fly actually gave it its name, and most people do associate nuclear power, which Sellafield is actually a nuclear power station in the northwest of England and most people associate nuclear with bright fluorescent green so it seemed a natural name for the fly to call it the, the Sellafield Blue and the blue was if any of my teammates ever shouted over from another boat what was I catching on, I couldn't very well say, well, you remember that fluorescent green fly that we tied the other day? Because everybody would know to look for fluorescent green. But if I shouted over, well, we were catching the Sellafield Blue Boys, you could almost see the anglers in the other boats looking through the boxes for something blue. So we kind of threw them off the scent a little bit. There we go. Now, that's the fly finished. And it's a really nice fly to use as a middle dropper. It works extremely well for both browns and rainbows. But many thanks for watching. I hope you get round to tying it and I'm absolutely sure it will catch you fish. 
and I'm going to say good afternoon to you all and have a good day. Thank you very much for watching.